Now the reading today is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 4 to 7. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God? Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So, Lord, please uh, speak through me this morning. Please teach us more of what it means to trust you, to love you, and to obey you. Amen. Well, I'm continuing our theme uh, this week of what Jesus teaches us about ourselves in his greatest sermons. And today I want to ask you, what are you most afraid of? What are you most afraid of? For many of us, particularly when we were growing up, uh, but often into adult life too, our greatest fear is rejection. What other people think of us can be all-consuming. Here Jesus tells us that what God thinks of us is infinitely more important. And I don't use that word infinitely by accident. Uh, because of a certain children's book, people often use the phrase, I love you to the moon and back. Friends, God loves you so much more than that. If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, it was a moment of complete wonderment when I realised that I meant more to God than many sparrows. I was uh, on a healing weekend at a retreat centre a bit similar to this one. Perhaps like me, you grew up singing uh, the song, God Sees the Little Sparrow Fall. And the chorus goes, he loves me too, I know he loves me too. If God so loves the little birds, I know he loves me too. But deep down, I didn't really know what that love was until I was... Uh, well into my 40s. Jesus is teaching here about getting a proper perspective on things, an eternal perspective, getting our priorities right. He knows that we so easily fall into the trap of comparing ourselves with other people. Perhaps uh, you heard the message on Tuesday about not judging others harshly. Well, here Jesus tells us not to judge ourselves harshly. Why do we care so much what other people think? I don't fully know the reasons, but my observation is that it's getting worse in our culture and the church is not exempt. Everyone has to fit in. Everyone has to look good. Everyone has to think the, think, uh, think the same things or you'll be cancelled, which is being cast into social hell or oblivion. The anxiety this is causing many people, particularly our young people, has seen a massive rise in mental health issues, self-harm, suicide. And this is the real cost of feeling insignificant. Well, perhaps it's always been the case, but um, it seemed to me that there, there was more room for quirky characters when I was at school. Bullying and teasing did happen, of course, because children are also fallen human beings and basically pack animals. But the hounding on social media today of anyone who doesn't conform to a particular agenda, accept certain views or look a certain way, is frightening. I really feel for young believers. Fear of rejection by their peers is going to have a crippling effect on their evangelism. Online bullying is incredibly destructive. But yet, Jesus says here and elsewhere, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. As my counsellor said to me frequently, what's the worst thing that can happen, Julia? 
So often we have our priorities all wrong. We should be more concerned about what God thinks about us than what people think of us. I mean, how many of us are frightened of admitting to their Christian friends that they've had counselling, for example? Personally, I'd recommend it if you need it. Jesus says, we are to fear the one who has authority. What exactly do we mean when we talk about fearing God? It's not a cowering in the corner kind of thing. It's awe, a respect, an awareness of how great he is. We've sung all about that, haven't we? It's all also awareness that God has enormous power and authority over his creation. Remembering we are his creatures. Remembering who we are and whose we are. While he's giving this particular sermon, Jesus is addressing a huge crowd, but specifically his friends. Those whom Christ calls his friends do not need to be afraid of any enemies. Let these people do their worst to you, says Jesus, and don't be afraid because after that, there's nothing more they can do. The immortal soul of the believer lives and is happy and enjoys itself and God. What's the worst thing that can happen, says Jesus? You get to be in eternity with the Lord sooner. But you see, many people these days have little or no concern about the afterlife. And clearly, from what Jesus is saying, they should be thinking about it. When he says, fear him who, after your body's been killed, has authority to throw you onto the rubbish heap of Gehenna, because that's what the translation actually is, he's reminding his listeners that there are choices and consequences in this life. We can choose to go God's way, or we can go our own way and suffer the consequences, which I did for many years. God wants the best for us, but he gives us free will. Believers know that life without God is hell. But if people choose to live without reference to God, that will be their experience in the afterlife too. God will be absent. He will accept their decision. God doesn't go where he's not wanted, but he is the final arbiter. Well, the Lord's words are strong, aren't they? We may think we're hearing the harsh words of punishment, but they are words of warning. There will be a final judgment. Another bit of Jesus' teaching, which is a bit difficult to argue with. In the preceding verses, Jesus has been clear that there is no place for hypocrisy in the Christian life. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. If we belong to Jesus, we must be bold enough to declare it. What's the worst thing that can happen? If we're not careful, life can be defined by who or what we fear. Have we forgotten our salvation? The Apostle James, in his letter, makes a good point when he says, to forget what God himself has revealed to us through his word when we go out into the world to live is as absurd as forgetting what we look like as soon as we walk away from the mirror. As always, Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows how easily we can idolise the things of this world, that we lack discernment when it comes to the choices we make. But you know, God values us. God loves us. And God has given us a way to spend eternity with him. Do we choose it? Do we really believe God knows how many hairs are on our head? An astonishing thought. Why would he bother with us? 
Well, quite simply, because you and I are worth more than many sparrows. So do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of the opinions of others. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not be anxious. The recurring themes. Jesus knows what we're like. He knows we're going to be afraid. He knows we're going to worry. What are you most afraid of? Many people are fearful of change. It makes us feel uncomfortable because we're not in control. But as Jesus says, we're not in control. Ask yourself, who's the boss of your life? Who's in the driving seat? If the answer is not the Lord Jesus Christ, can I respectfully suggest that you have not fully relinquished your life to him? It isn't easy, but it is necessary if you're going to experience all the blessings of the Christian life. And I'd love you to experience more of God's blessings. But to do that, you have to let go of the steering wheel. Don't be afraid. Release your hands. Hold them open. Receive from God all that he has to give you. You see, if you're hanging on to control, your hands are closed to all the blessings that there are for the receiving. All these things will be given to you as well, he says. Amen.